Today we're going to make this adorable French memo board, so stick around to learn how we do it. Good morning everybody. This is Sarah and today I decided I was going to fight off some of the dreary, foggy morning that we have going on here with some bright colors kind of cheer up the day. Um, we're going to be making what's called a French board, French memo board. Um, there's a lot of different terms for it, but I decided that I was going to use some of this really cute Waverly um, material I found. I just picked this up at Walmart. Uh, it's just a fat quarter. It's all you need. It was only two or three bucks. Not much to it. Um, you're going to need some satin ribbon, needle and thread. You're going to need a staple gun. You're also going to need a little bit of batting and this I was given, gifted by a friend of mine, thank you Judy, and she gave me this along with a lot of different materials and patterns and just different things that I could use uh, in my product projects. Um, after this, you're going to need a mounted canvas. You just need it mounted on a wood frame. You can pick these up any at any craft store. Walmart has them. I'm not sure if Meyer has them or not. Um, but you can pick these up pretty much any place. And the last thing you're going to need is either some buttons or as I'm going to use um, just some of these little um, sequins. Yes, I have a lot of them. There is a ton of them in here and sadly or not, however you want to look at it, this is not my only container of them. Alright, so let's go ahead and get started. The first thing you want to do is remove your plastic. Alright, let's go ahead and get started. The first thing you're going to do is you are going to measure out your batting. And if you do need to buy this, um, it's not very expensive. Alright, and what I'm going to do is just lay this out. Try to straighten it around just so I have enough on each side that I can fold it over and staple it on the inside of the frame there. Right, so I want to give it a couple inches on each side. All right, there we go. And then I just need to cut the material. So I'll be back as soon as I get that done. All right, now that I have the batting all stapled on there, if you can see, it's just a quick and easy process. Um, there's not a lot to it. And we're ready to start placing the fabric on the front. We're going to pretty much repeat the process that we did with the batting. We're just going to turn it over. And while we are going to be more careful, since this does have a pattern to it, to be sure things are lined up exactly straight, looks pretty good. And we are going to fold it over and we are going to start stapling this in as well. All right, since it's easiest for me to work at the top, I'm going to go ahead and start up here. I'm going to cut the corners as such. That way, when we fold in and over, we have less fabric to contend with, and it'll have a nicer, neater look. Fold that edge over first, or fold the middle over first, and pull over one edge and then the other, keeping the creases as close to the corner as you can. All right, and now that we have the fabric on over the batting, it is time to lay the ribbon out. 
And with this particular pattern, it makes it really easy to measure exactly where we want the ribbon to go, as well as make sure the angles are correct on all of it, because we do basically have a grid pattern here. So what we want to do is just start laying the ribbon out. Make sure you have it the shiny side up. So say if we want to take it down three from here, we would take it over three from here. So that would probably work, but I think I will go down about four. So I will run it. I think I like it right in between the two um, white designs. It makes it look like it's got a little bit of a ruffle on it. So that is where I'm going to place my ribbon. And I'm going to start by turning this around. Turning it over here so I know exactly where I want it to start. And on the back, we are going to staple that on as well. All right. And yes, I did have to switch out my staple gun. I ran out of the size staples I needed for the little one, so I had to go get the big one from the garage. Now, again, I'm going to come around on this side. Bringing this over and stapling it. Right now, if you were going to make these to sell, you would obviously want to make sure that the final product looked more finished on the back. But for now, this is, I think, good for me. Okay. And I'm going to trim this off here. There we go. My scissors are getting a little bit dull. All right, so there's our first ribbon. So since we've gone down three, well, one, two, three, four. We're going to go over one, two, three, four, and place it here. And again, lay it right in between. Around to the back, put a staple in it. And we're going to continue going across like this until we get the ribbon on exactly how we want it. All right, now that we have all of our stripes going diagonally in one direction, we are going to go back in the other direction, uh, same way we did before, and just lay them out in the same pattern so that when we are done, we have some ribbon squares going diagonally across our piece. All right. Once I have the ribbon in place, I am going to take my needle and thread and starting from the back of the canvas, I am going to tack each junction of the ribbon. And once I am done with that, I am going to take my hot glue gun and secure each of the knots in the back of the canvas just to be sure they don't come loose and they stay secure. After that, I'm going to use my glue gun to And once you have of the all of back, your ribbons tacked down, down so they don't break. the last step, if you're using the rhinestones, is to hot glue them down over each of these. If you're using buttons, of course, you could have skipped this step and just tied or sewn the buttons down as you um, as you tighten the ribbons down. But what I'm going to do is just put a dab of hot glue 
and a rhinestone over each cross section. And once those are all tightened down and the glue is dry, you just go back and pull any of those loose glue strings, get those off of there. and you are done. Now I will say that I should have thought a little bit more about the spacing of the ribbons. Um, I didn't want them too close together, um, didn't want them too far apart either, uh, so this spacing looked good to me, but it didn't quite work out up here in this top corner, and I had played around with the idea of putting just a little bit of ribbon and a rhinestone on each top corner. However, it didn't look right because it was obviously not square at that point. So just be sure when you lay out the ribbons that you have everything a little bit better planned out than I did here, but it still turned out super cute. Uh, the last thing to do to hang it is flip it over and I'm going to go ahead and use this on the these two um, larger open spaces at the top so that smaller things can be stuck down in these bottom areas. So the last thing I'm going to do is flip this over and I am going to get a couple of picture hangers and just tack them in on each side here and we'll be done. If you like this project or any of my projects, please be sure to like, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you all soon on our next project.